Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. So in the previous video, we have seen that what is shift register and we have also seen the different types of shift register. So in this video, we will learn about this serial in serial out type of shift register. So in the previous video, we have seen that in this CISO register, the data is entered into the register serially and it is also taken out serially. Now depending on the direction in which this data is shifted, we have total two types of shift registers. That is the shift right or the shift left registers. So in this shift right type of CISO register, the data is entered from the left side and it is also moving from left to right. Similarly, in this shift left type of CISO register, the data is entered from the right side and it is moving from right to left side. So first, let us talk about the shift right type of CISO register. So this is the diagram of the 4-bit shift right type of CISO register. So as you can see, since it is a serial in serial out type of shift register, so the output of the one flip-flop is connected to the input of the second flip-flop. And in this shift right type of CISO register, the input is applied at the leftmost flip-flop while the output is taken from the rightmost flip-flop. So first, let us understand how the data moves in this shift right type of CISO register. So here, this flip-flop stores the MSB of the register while this rightmost flip-flop stores the LSB. And let's say we want to store this 1010 in this shift register where this 1 is the MSB and this 0 is the LSB. So to move this data, the data will be shifted in this register starting from the LSB. So initially, let's say all the bits of this register is equal to 0. So whenever there is a no clock pulse, then irrespective of the input, all the flip-flop will store its current data. So now, starting from the LSB, to shift this 0 into the shift register, First of all, we need to apply this 0 bit to the input. So now, before the arrival of the clock gauge, if we see the inputs for the all the registers, then they are these 0, 0 and 0. That means now, once the clock gauge arrives, then all the four flip-flops will respond to their present inputs. That means if we see the output of this first stage, then it will become 0. And likewise, for the remaining three stages also, the output will become 0. And now, whatever data which was earlier stored in this last flip-flop will get discarded. So these outputs will be available at the output line just after the propagation delay of the flip-flop. And since the output of the one flip-flop is connected to the next stage, so these outputs will act as an input for the next stage during the next clock age. So now, the next bit which we want to transfer is equal to 1. So the same one should be applied to the input. And at the same time, if we see the present inputs for the remaining three flip-flops, then they are 0, 0 and 0. So now at the next clock age, these four flip-flops will respond to their present inputs. That means now the output of this first flip-flop will become 1. And similarly, these D2, D1 and D0 will respond to their present inputs. And once again, now whatever data which was earlier stored in this D0 will get discarded. That means after the second clock age, this will be the output of the shift register. And these outputs will act as an input for the next stage during the next clock age. So now at the next clock age, the data which we want to move into the register is equal to 0. So the same 0 should be also applied to the input just before the clock age. And at the same time, if you see the remaining three inputs to the flip-flop, then they are 1, 0 and 0. So now at the clock gauge, all the four flip-flops will respond to their present inputs. That means now the output of this D3 will become 0. And similarly, the output of this D2, D1 and D0 will become 1, 0 and 0. And earlier, whatever data which was stored in this D0 will get discarded. That means after the third clock age, this will be the data inside the shift register. And finally, the data which we want to shift into the register is equal to 1. So the same 1 should also apply to the input just before the next clock age. And at the same time, 
if we see the inputs for the remaining three flip flops then they are 0 1 and 0 that is the output of the previous stage so now at the clock edge once again all the four flip flops will respond to their present inputs that means now just after the clock edge the output of this first flip flop or the output of this d3 will become 1 and likewise the output of this d3 d2 and d0 will become 0 1 and 0 and whatever data which was earlier stored in this d0 will get discarded so in this way after the four clock pulses this 1010 data will get shifted into the register and as you can see at every clock edge the data is moving from left to right side and that is why this register is known as the shift right type of CISO register so if you see the same thing in the timing diagram then this is how it will look like so as you can see at the clock edge the input to the flip-flop is equal to zero and this input is applied to the MSB that means at the first clock edge the output of this Q3 will remain zero similarly at the next clock edge the input to the d3 is equal to 1 therefore its output will become 1 but as you know the flip top will take certain time to respond to the present input that means the output q3 will change only after the propagation delay of the flip flop likewise the next input to the flip flop is equal to 0 that means at the third clock age the q3 output will become 0 and once again it will take certain time to respond to this present input likewise at the fourth clock age the input to the d3 flip-flop is equal to 1 and therefore its output will become 1 so this is the timing diagram of the q3 output and since the q3 output is connected to this d2 flip-flop so this d2 flip-flop will respond to this q3 output at the every clock age so here at the clock age since the q3 is 0 so the q2 will also remain 0 similarly at the second clock age since the q3 is once again 0 so this q2 will remain 0 likewise at the third clock age since the q3 is equal to 1 so this q2 will also become 1 but as you know it will take certain time to respond to this q3 output likewise at the fourth clock age since the q3 is equal to 0 so this q2 will become 0 and once again it will take certain time to respond to this q3 output so this is the timing diagram of the q2 output similarly we can also see the timing diagram of this q1 and q0 so as you know this q2 output is connected to the d1 input that means this d1 flip-flop will respond to the q2 output so once again at the first clock age since the q2 is equal to 0 so this q1 will remain 0 likewise at the second and the third clock edge also this q2 output is equal to zero and therefore this q1 output will remain zero and at the fourth clock edge if you see now this q2 output is equal to one therefore this q1 output will also become one and once again it will become one only after the propagation delay of the flip-flop so this is the timing diagram of the q1 output and likewise we can also see this q0 waveform so as you can see at every clock edge since the q1 output is equal to 0 so this q0 will remain 0 up to the four clock edges so just after the first clock edge if you see the outputs of this q3 q2 q1 and q0 then they are 0 0 0 0 similarly after the second clock edge if you see these four outputs then they are 1 0 0 0 that is the third row and likewise during the third clock age these outputs are 0 1 0 0 that is the fourth row and lastly after the fourth clock age these four outputs are 1 0 1 0 which represents the last row so in this way with the help of the timing diagram also we can also see the working of this shift right register so of course if you want to take this data outside then once again we will require four clock pulses and as you can see first of all this lsb will move outside so in this serial in serial out type of shift register once we move the data inside the shift register then we need to make sure that this input line will get disabled 
because if this input line is not disabled then the random data will be available at the input side and due to that in the subsequent clock ages any arbitrary value will get stored inside the shift register so to avoid that we also need to have the control over the input line and that can be achieved with the little modification in the existing circuit so here as you can see when this enable input is high then the input will reach to this d3 input and similarly if you see for the subsequent stages then whenever this enable input is high then the first and gate will get enabled and because of that the output of the previous stage is connected to the input of the next flip flop so in this way whenever this enable input is high then the circuit will work as the shift right register but whenever this enable input is low then the first and gate will get disabled and at that time the second and gate will get enabled so as you can see through this and gate the output of the existing flip flop is connected back to the input that means whenever this enable input is low then the flip flop will retain its present state and whenever this enable input becomes high then only it will shift the data from the input line so in this way we can add the control over the input line now here if you observe this conventional block which consists of the two and gates and one or gate then it is nothing but the two cross one multiplexer so here this enable input is given to the selection line of the multiplexer so whenever this enable input is high then the inputs will get connected to the flip flops and whenever this enable input is low then this zero line will get enabled that means in that case the output of the flip flop will get connected back to the input side so in this way by adding the multiplexer we can have the control over the input line so this is all about the shift right type of shift register similarly we can also have the shift left type of shift register where the data is entered from the right side and it is moving towards the left side so in this case the input is applied from the lsb of the register while the output is taken from the msb so here this is the lsb of the register and this is the msb so as you can see the input is applied to the lsb of the register and the output is taken from the msb so typically this serial in serial out type of shift register is used for the arithmetic operations as well as for giving the time delay because if you see over here then for the end bit shift register once we apply the input then after the n clock pulses the same input is appearing at the output side for example if we apply the one at the first clock age then the same is appearing at the output after the four clock ages so in this way with the help of the shift register we can provide the delay of n times t clock duration but apart from that it is also used for doing certain arithmetic operations and to perform these arithmetic operations it is required to shift the data either in left side or right side depending on the arithmetic operations so for that this bidirectional shift registers are used so in this bidirectional shift register it is possible to move the data from right to left or left to right side so here as you can see to perform this bidirectional shift operation this two cross one multiplexers have been used so whenever this line is equal to 1 then the shift right operation will get performed so in that case this input will appear at the msb but at the same time the output of this flip flop will get connected to the next stage because whenever this r is equal to 1 then the one input line will get enabled and because of that the output of the one flip flop is get connected to the next stage that means whenever this r is equal to 1 then the shift right operation will get performed similarly when this r is equal to 0 then this zero line will get enabled so in that case this input will get applied to the lsb and now this output of the one flip flop is connected to the previous stage that means now this q0 will get connected to the d1 and likewise the output of the d1 will get connected to the d2 so in this way when this line is equal to 0 then the shift left operation will get performed and in this way it is possible to perform the bidirectional operation so in the next video we will see some applications of this ciso register and we will see that how we can perform the different arithmetic operations with the help of this shift registers 
But I hope in this video, you understood the working of this serial in serial out type of shift register. So if you have any questions or suggestions, then do let me know here in the comment section below. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos.